ಭೂತವ ಮುರತಿ ವಿನೋದಕಾರಿ ಪಲಪನ ವಿಸರೆ ನಹಿ ಜೋ ವಿಸಾರಿ ಜುಗಲ ಚರಣ ಸೋಲ ಚಿನ್ನ ಜೇಹ ನಜರ ಸಮೀಪೆ ರಹೋ ಅಮಾರಿ ಏಹ ನಜರ ಸಮೀಪೆ ರಹೋ ಅಮಾರಿ ಏಹ ಮುಲುಗನ್ ಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ನಿಜೆ ಹರಿಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ನಿಜೆ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಭಗವಾನ್ ನಿಜೆ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಓ ಮೈಡಿ our beloved gansham maharaj the path maker to our liberation our guidance our puja guruji puja santo puja bhagat ji and all of you devotees jai swami narayan bhagwan swami narayan gave us many gifts when he came on this earth 200 years ago gifts in the form of scriptures gifts in the form of temples gifts in the form of saints gifts in the form of very very important principles that were the essence of the vedas and other holy scriptures Bhagwan Swami Narayan extracted everything and gave us one book that he called the Shiksha Patri. Bhagwan Swami Narayan Shiksha Patri was and is different from all the other scriptures. How so? Because number 1, it's the essence it's the essence of all the scriptures nonetheless it has different ethics moral codes agnas codes of commands for each and every category of hari bhaktos may it be male female widow married uh the spiritual head saints brahmacharis so on and so forth but nonetheless in bhagwan swami and shiksha patri he has guided his devotees to be nearly flawless in living this day to day life so one becomes happy in this world and the world beyond now in this shiksha patri there is many many you can say regulations codes of commands that bhagwan swami narayan had written down himself in vartal specifically 212 verses out of them there's a simple code of conduct of not to eat onion and garlic that bhagwan swami narayan has stated in his shiksha patri now living in such a country here in the united states and even the united kingdom and other countries this is a very difficult rule to follow because number 1 eating controlling the sense of taste is a very difficult task indeed but nonetheless many many of us tend to eat outside foods which 99.9% contain maybe an item obviously that contains onion and garlic due to that resisting is very difficult but a question arises why did bhagwan swami ran write this rule well there's a story behind it on one of his uh so called followers or maybe say a follower to be and why bhagwan samyan kind of established this rule and the scientific reason behind it will also be revealed in this charitra swami narayan hari bhagwan swami narayan was vis- visiting the homes of his devotees in junagadh for the purpose of sanctifying them meaning purifying them 
He also took his meals at homes of some devotees. Meaning Bhagwan Swaminarayan in that time always traveled, was always on constant travel due to his vision of purifying and redempting innumerable souls. And this is the only way it's possible. Bhagwan Swaminarayan and his Yakantik Satpurush, when he comes on this earth, they travel all across the lands even mosquitoes, small insects, organisms, and human beings and animals, just by the Akantik Satpurush's or Maharaj's, you can say, touch, the wind blown from their clothes, their talks, any wave form of connection redeems that soul and burns innumerable sins just by their mere contact. Now, Bhagwan Swaminarayan in that time traveled and he also ate at some of the homes, uh, some of the devotees' homes to please that devotee. Bhagwan was Bhagwan. Nothing ever and will never touch him in any way, so form. But just to please his devotees, because when Bhagwan comes on this earth, his sole purpose, according to the Vachnamrut, his sole intention is to please and uh, give enjoyment to his devotees. If we look in the Sastras and the 24 incarnations in the past, there is no other incarnation, deity, God, that has ever had such kind of an intention for his followers or disciples. That's what makes Bhagwan Swaminarayan unique and supreme. So, on with the story. One day, Gokul Das, a devotee, invited Maharaj for lunch. Everyone was happy in the house, waiting for Maharaj to come. However, there was one person who disliked Maharaj. It was the mother of Gokul Das. She considered Maharaj to be a sorcerer, meaning a magician in that type, kind of like a person who um, kind of played tricks on some uh, tricks on uh, people and then made them into their devotees. So this old lady, the mother of Gokul Das, did not appreciate Maharaj or his presence there either. She was also bitter with her son for giving up their traditional Vaishnav faith to become a Swaminarayan devotee. Now, in that time, conversion of uh, religion was something that was uh, very forbidden and very uh, rare in that occasion. But Bhagwan Swaminarayan's charm was so magnifying. Bhagwan Swaminarayan's divinity, Bhagwan Swaminarayan's aura was so attractive that kings, even the lowest of the people, even those who had the strongest faith in another religion, would automatically convert and transform due to Bhagwan Swamiran's personality, aura, persona. That's why in that time, she was bitter that her son transformed from Vaishnav to the Swamiran religion. She often said disapprovingly, my son has gone astray. So she had decided not to see the face of Swaminarayan when he came to her house. Meaning, due to her son converting religions from Vaishnav to the Swaminarayan, this mother held a grudge that, you know, I don't want, want to see Swaminarayan's face even because he has transformed my son. Sriji Maharaj came. At that time, the old lady locked herself inside another room. When Maharaj came to know of it, he smiled. The sadhus with him asked, Why are you smiling? Srijimarad answered, Gokul's mother does not want to see my face, so she had hid herself. But she doesn't know that in spite of her not seeing me, I can still enter her heart. Bhagwan Swamiran's strength, his power, his uh, omniscience was ever present everywhere. Even when he came on this earth, he could still see innumerable universes at the same time and the intentions of innumerable souls at the same time whenever he pleased, whenever he liked. 
Then what is it for this old lady hiding in a small room in a very small home which is only five feet away from Maharaj? Nothing. Maharaj could obviously see the intention of the lady. Nonetheless, Maharaj was smirking and telling his saints that it's very humorous to me that a, a lady is trying to hide but she doesn't know that I can enter into her heart and know her intentions. Maharaj then washed his hands and feet and sat down to have his meal. While eating, he appreciated the inner feelings and devotion of Gokul Das. Maharaj gave prasadhi to all. When the sadhus finished their meals, Maharaj got up to leave. Gokul Das's mother became impatient because Maharaj had spent a lot of time in her house. She thought, let me open the door a little and see what he looks like. In the scriptures, the form of Maharaj is said to be indescribable. Whoever has had his darshan in the past, who is having his darshan currently, and who will have his darshan in the future, will only experience something which is beyond this world and something which is undescribable because Bhagwan is not of this world even if he has two eyes two ears one nose two legs two arms and a body and it may seem that he looks like a human yet his divinity is beyond comprehension to the human mind but the form of Maharaj is indescribable on this earth yet this lady had some kind of a some kind of an intriguing uh, curiosity that what does this Maharaj look like this Swami Narayan what does he look like this Swami Narayan who has converted my son who has taken away my son what does he look like? This Swami Narayan who has ate at my house, what does he look like? I want to know. I want to know. These kinds of thoughts are going through this mother's mind. But for those followers of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, his saints, his disciples, if they had heard this story, they would only know that this is Maharaj is doing. Maharaj is entering into this mother's heart this lady's heart and giving her these kinds of thoughts because he wants to have her do his darshan but it is not possible without some kind of thought happening after a thought occurs the action happens but Maharaj initiated the spark and from there let's see what happens she's thinking in her mind let me open the door a little and see what he looks like. At least I'll know what Swaminarayan is like. And there's no chance of our eyes meeting. This is what she's thinking in her mind. The lady opened the door slightly and looked at Swaminarayan. But in that same moment, Sriji Maharaj looked in her direction. And there, their eyes met for a fraction of a second. It only takes a fraction of a second for Bhagwan Swami Narayan to connect with our soul and for our soul to connect with Bhagwan Swami Narayan and for that electricity to occur. There's many, many things that occurs due to that connection. It's easy Yet, it's difficult at the same time. Bhagwan Swamiran in his Vachanamrut states that Bhagwan is not even an atom's distance away inside the soul. This is how close he is. Think about it. In atom's distance, how much is an atom's distance? If Bhagwan resides inside of our soul, and he is our controller and he is constantly there and he himself states that Bhagwan is not even an atom's distance away then where is he? 
what is exactly an atom's distance? How minute is an atom? According to science right now, according to electron uh, microscopes, an atom is so minute that it cannot be seen by the naked eye. Not only that, but even microscopes. You need a special electron microscope to see atoms. That's how we can say invisible they are to the eye, yet they're still there. Oxygen is in the air. We believe we're breathing oxygen. Not air, but oxygen. Yet, you can't see oxygen, yet we still know and believe that it's there. We believe that by breathing that oxygen, we are alive. Not only that, but a principal sitting in his office, watching each and every child from cameras, from each and every angle, he's not present everywhere, yet he is still there present everywhere at that same time watching each and every screen while each child passes by there's no kind of mischief going on in the hallways there's no kind of trouble or fights that have came about monitoring each and every person in the same exact manner Bhagwan lives inside of us without a doubt he is there just like how oxygen is there in the same way Bhagwan is there, yet he is not even an atom's distance away. Yet it's our shame that we cannot break that invisible wall to see him inside of our heart. But Sriji Maharaj looked into her direction and their eyes met for a fraction of a second. Instantly, the lady shut the door but the Murti of Maharaj had entered into her heart. Yet, I mentioned, it only takes atoms, uh, uh, it only takes a fraction of a second, but Maharaj entered into her heart just within that fraction of a second. That proves that Bhagwan is already inside of her heart. It's just that small curtain, that invisible curtain, that curtain which is there yet it isn't there just needed to be opened and for this lady it became open she started seeing Maharaj wherever she went and whatever she did now this is a kind of a spiritual state uh, described in the Vachnamrut where got any seventh to be specific where Maharaj states that such a highly spiritualized person wherever he casts his eyes, meaning his drashti, not his eyes meaning physical eyes, but his drashti, his vision, the vision of the Atma. All he sees is Maharaj everywhere. Whatever he does, all he sees is Maharaj. Such is the kind of a spiritual state of an ekantik. But here, Maharaj, would some kind of Akaran Karuna, meaning Bhagwan performed some kind of daya, compassion, without any reason for this mother of Gokuldas, who had, may I remind you, who had very, very bitterness with Bhagwan Swaminarayan due to his son converting religions. She had such kind of bitterness that she did not even want Swaminarayan in her house. But due to her son, she let Swaminarayan enter her house. That very lady, within a couple of minutes, this scenario occurred. And for that fraction of a second, after that, Bhagwan Swaminarayan entered her heart. And afterwards, wherever she casted her eyes, she saw Bhagwan. This only happens in Bhagwan Swaminarayan's religion. These kind of charitras don't occur anywhere else. 
there is no other scriptures that have such kind of charitras of disciples, devotees, or devotees to be anywhere else but the Swaminarayan religion. That's why its uniqueness is beyond com comprehension to any other religion. Nonetheless, all religions are praiseworthy. All religions, deities, gods are to be respected. As Puja Guruji's quote, respect all, follow one, hate none. But when it comes to supremacy, when it comes to number one, when it comes to ultimate, when it comes to the highest peak on this earth, it's only one, and that's Bhagwan Swami Narayan, without a doubt. She started seeing Maharaj wherever, wherever she went and whatever she did. Many ancient rushis were unable to see God in spite of performing severe austerities. My, may I add, Zobari, who performed tap or penance for 60,000 years in a lake, did not achieve God, meaning without eating food, without doing anything but performing tap and just waiting his time out for God's arrival. Instead, he got actually bounded. And it's a long story, but he did not receive God. Yet, here, many rushis perform such kind of austerities, yet they have not got this spiritual state of wherever they cast their eyes, they see Bhagwan. But the old lady did not value the glory of seeing God. Now this is a problem. Sadhguru Gunathyan Swami says in his talks that yes, we have received the Chintamni, but it is in the hands of a child. Chintamni meaning a wishing stone, meaning whatever you want, you can get. Bhagwan is that wishing stone. We have received Bhagwan, but if we were a child and if we received a chintamni, meaning a stone, it's not any kind of glamorous stone or it doesn't have any diamonds embedded into it or any kind of gold or anything like that merged into it. It's just a stone. But with this stone, you can make any wish and it would occur. But if it's in the hand of a child, then what child or what value would a child have for a stone? Instead, if that child saw some kind of shiny coin, which is only, let's say, one cent or 25 cent coin, and due to its shininess and attractiveness, the child would be more attracted towards that coin instead of a stone. That stone would be thrown away. So that's why Gunatya and Swami has said this talk that, yes, uh, we do have the Chintamni, but it's in the hand of a child. In the same way, this lady did not have any value for the glory of seeing God. Rushi Munus who are trying to see Bhagwan for thousands and thousands of years, making their body uh, last very long time on this earth, cannot do so. Yet, this lady, without any kind of charge, only by the grace of Maharaj, saw his idol constantly, did not value this. Her mind was clouded in ignorance. She felt terribly uncomfortable. She thought about what she could do to erase Maharaj from her vision. Now, some people think about putting Maharaj into their vision, and some people think about erasing or deleting Maharaj from their vision, if they could see Maharaj. Now, who's right and who's wrong? We can only put it to Bhagwan's hand. But whatever she went and whatever she did, she saw Sriji Maharaj before her eyes. Even when she closed her eyes, she saw him. Day by day, she worried more and more. She thought this is a problem. Kind of like if we have some kind of spot on our uh, skin and it starts to grow a little more and more daily, then we worry 
oh, what's going to happen? Do I need to go to the doctors? Do I need to uh, apply some kind of cream or gel on it? What will happen is I hope this is not cancer, etc., so on and so forth. Such kind of thoughts occur in our mind, and we worry and worry and worry. But in the end, we figure out that, no, it's going to go away, and it's not a big deal. In the same way, day by day, she worried more and more that why do I keep seeing this God, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan? I am a devotee of Vaishnav, yet why do I keep seeing Swami Narayan everywhere? She became worried and worried. Finally, a thought struck her mind. Let me go to someone who opposes Swami Narayan, someone who will show me a way out. So she went to her neighbors and told them about her problem. This was kind of like uh, this this Ba, or you can say mother, believed that she was kind of like uh, under a, a spell, you know, or a, a spell was cast in on her that by seeing Maharaj everywhere, this was, uh, this was a spell or this was uh, some kind of unfortunate event that occurred in her life. But she didn't know what was the end redemption that was going to happen happened currently in her life and she didn't know that this was actually a very high spiritual state that very very rare have uh, attained they showed her a way out mother Swaminarayan dislikes onions and garlic just eat them and Swaminarayan will go away now in Bhagwan Swaminarayan Shikshapatri he has stated that my devotee should not eat onion or garlic this is not my uh this is a rule that is uh you know uh that i expect everyone to follow and these neighbors must have known that bhagwan swamiran doesn't uh abide by his devotees eating onion and garlic so they told her to do the opposite and start eating onion and garlic just eat them and swamiran will go away the old lady felt happy immediately she ate onions and garlic and she stopped seeing Sriji Maharaj instantly. Now, you're probably wondering what is the point of this Shikshapatri rule that was stated in the beginning, and here it comes at the end. Well, this is going to tie everything to, into place. Seeing that Maharaj himself doesn't like onion and garlic, obviously, the very reason for this, scientifically, is that it brings into our life tamogun tamogun is darkness tamogun is uh, pure darkness um, ego all these kinds of anger these kinds of uh, vices lie in tamogun so by eating and consuming onion and garlic this gun tamogun arises inside of us this you can say state and due to this state arising Bhagwan goes away from us meaning runs away from us vanishes from our heart and due to that we cannot see him so this is where that rule or regulation ties into place here but going back into the story she stopped to see Maharaj instantly after eating and consuming the onion and garlic many years later the old lady became a satsangi she went to Gadara and requested Sriji Maharaj, bless me like before, so I can see you always. Maharaj replied, that was only due to my grace, but you dissolved it by eating onions and garlic. Now you must engage yourself in doing severe sadhans, meaning spiritual efforts. And then again, you will be able to see my form. This is how hard it was, but Maharaj made it easy and gave the lady a chintamni but due to her breaking a rule of any eating onion and garlic Bhagwan went away Bhagwan ran away and onwards when she met Bhagwan later on Bhagwan explained to her the reason why so understanding that Bhagwan Swaminarayan in his scriptures that he has given to us as a gift nonetheless sadhus mandirs etc so on and so forth are only for our benefit and will only give us happiness 
just like how Christmas Eve, the day of, where parents wrap gifts, buy gifts for their children and wrap them and put them underneath a tree. And then the next morning, very early Christmas Day, those children anxiously waiting come down, run down the stairs and go by the tree and start to break open these gifts wondering what they got thinking if they got what uh, they wanted to things like that in the same way that same anxious feeling should arise in our hearts that Bhagwan has gifted us with his idol Hare Krishna Maharaj Piyuda Gansha Maharaj his Ekantik Satpurush his scriptures Vachnamrud Shikshapatri so on and so forth and his mandirs, then why not go ahead and engage in them anxiously? Just like how that child's curiosity to see what he or she received in the same way. Our curiosity to see Bhagwan's idol, our curiosity to read the scriptures, our curiosity to do Bhagwan's bhajan, our curiosity to engage in Sant Samagam, such kind of curiosity arises, then one's moksha can be done very easily and in this life. So saying this, we should remember Bhagwan Swamiran's gifts to us and also how we can utilize them in our heart or in our life to make our life better. Saying this, my humble Jai